All right, today we're going to review some Betaflight 4.0 flight footage and give some setting tweaks that you might think about from the defaults or the presets you're using for your rig. Okay, so before I roll the flight footage, I just wanted to show the rig. I'm going to go everything backward. This is the, the quadcopter. So this is a Nova frame, Flight 1 Nova frame. This is a Flight 1... Uh, Revolt and a Bolt 32 with a R9 antenna down here and you can see just a little stubby axie on the back. These are HQ 50 43 props and then these are RCX uh, 2206 2400 KV motors uh, running on 4S. So that's what she looks like. So with this flight footage what I try to really focus on is showing a wide spread of the what I'm getting on Betaflight 4.0 uh, with this quad, trying to sew some smooth moves, trying to sew some sharp 180 turns, some split S's, some throttle pumps. So hopefully I think it will be self-apparent in watching the different sections of the flight. And I'm trying to really draw out prop wash. You can see prop wash. And then I'm going to loop back and then show you, we're going to break it down, the flight, and we're going to look at some of the PIDs and filter settings. They're a little unique, so you might be surprised and it gives you something else to think about. Something a little outside the box. Uh, and see how it works for you. It's, it, it works for me. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. So uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's roll the footage. This is the filter settings that was on that flight. You can see I have no low pass filters on the gyro, and then I just have one dynamic low pass filter by quad on the D term. And the settings are pretty low here. It parks the lowest it will allow the D term to go uh, as you're bringing the throttle down is 60 hertz, and the highest it will allow it to go is 175. I could probably eat that up to 200, but eh, it gets a little bit more uh, D term noise. Uh, the filter, the one filter that's not shown on here is the dynamic notch is turned on, so you can see that here as well. So that is turned on, and that's actually two notch filters. Uh, it's a cascaded dynamic notch in 4.0. No RPM filtering. This is just 
you know, with RPM turned off, this is just kind of what I would say the, the stock filtering for beta flight, just turning some things off. So this is a far cry from any of the presets or the defaults out there. You can see how the defaults are way more conservative than filtering, which is more safe, I guess. I guess the 4.0 defaults uh, just had the gyro low pass 2 on, and this was set down lower, but that's, you know, there were some cases where that wasn't enough. People needed to turn on some more. So it's kind of telling me, at least on 4S rig, you got some mechanical things you want to address, but it kind of shows the Betaflight team that, you know, going a little bit more on the edge with filtering, the community's builds aren't ready for that. So they need to go more conservative. So Betaflight, I'm sure in future releases, are is going to have more conservative filtering and you're still going to need to go through the practice of turning stuff off. So we can use my filter calc sheet. And if you're not familiar with this sheet, if you go to tiny dot cc forward slash uav tech you can go ahead and download this i'll put a little text up in the video here on it and uh, i have some videos I'll, I'll link to a video on this as well and it talks about this sheet but essentially this is a, a spreadsheet i developed that um, looks at the amount of phase delay you get from the filtering total this is each filter individually this is adding all the phase delay up and then this is the attenuation of each filter and then the red line is adding them all together for the, the result in that attenuation. So the setup we have here again is no gyro low pass filters, no static notches. We do have the dynamic notch turned on and I did make some tweaks here. I set the Q to 250 so the default is 120. You can change that in CLI. Um, just type in get DYN and then you can see the Q factor there. So I did bump that up a little bit. Uh, you could take that or leave that. It doesn't give you that much difference in latency down here. Uh, and it doesn't, that's what I have set. I also reduce the, you know, I do recommend if you're going to bump the queue up at all to chop off some latency to, you know, bring the notches a little closer together because they are a little narrower. And uh, so that's what I have set there. If you don't know what I'm talking about with all these terms like latency and phase delay and attenuation. I have a filter fundamentals series. Go check that out. I'll make a link to the first video on there and it's three videos in this in the series. Not too long, but it will really get you, I think, a big understanding of filtering and how everything uh, kind of works with phase delay and the upsides of filtering and the downsides of filtering as well. Other things in here, like I talked about with D-Boost before, turning kind of D-min into D-Boost, we can have, you can see my derivative terms are really high, 65 and 70. So during a sharp stick move, your D term will be boosted up to 65 or 70, depends if it's a flip or a roll. And then you can see, but a normal forward flight, I'm running D terms down around 25 to 30. And they, it, it hovers up a little bit above that. You could go back and if you look in the DVR point, that debug mode at the top kind of shows the active D terms as the flight's progressing. Notice my gain here as well, 55. So if I flip into that real quick and just turn, you know, turn on my trace setup six, you can see the D's around 28, 20 or 31 D gains for the smooth forward flights. And then as I get into more aggressive moves, you can see that starts to bump up into the four, high 30s and the low 40s. And then as I'm hitting into prop wash, which D term is what you know helps with prop wash, now we're getting up to 50, almost into the 60s here. That's the benefit to me for uh, D min or what I like to call maybe D boost. So what led me to go with turning off the low pass filter on the gyro? Well, if you really look at the debug mode DYN underscore LPF. It gives you the raw vibration on the roll axis. It also then gives you the data after it's been gone through all the filters except for the dynamic notch, even the RPM. And then it, obviously you can always just run then your gyro trace after fully filtered, which would be after the dynamic notch. So you can kind of see the, the lines here behind it, but we'll run a spectrum on it as well. You can see the raw, and this is after the gyro low pass filter one. And you can see those settings here. I just had gyro low pass filter one by quad from 150 to 110 and then had the other ones off the low pass filter two was off and no static notches and no rpm filter either so you can see that vibration it's not really attenuated it much and then you can see how the dynamic notch and the performance it gives so let's just look at the spectrographs quick so if i run a spectrograph on the raw you can see those motor vibrations in that range that we're totally talking about 
Here's 150 hertz, so there's really nothing below it. Then if I go to the pre-dynamic notch, you can see that moves down just a little bit. So let me just click back and forth between those two. So you can see it doesn't really do much. Yeah, it knocks it down a little bit. It does help with noise up here. It reduces, see this amplitude of this noise up here? It kind of crushes that out to nothing. So it helps there. And then let me run it right after the dynamic notch. Watch this. Bam! Dynamic notch just crushes all those peaks in there. So in looking at that, when you look at the, you know, what that's doing for you, but then also looking at the amount of phase delay, you know, it's causing 0.5 milliseconds of phase delay. That's quite a bit. And uh, I'm not really getting much, and that's at 80% throttle. Let's go down to 50% throttle, around 0.6 milliseconds. So looking at the amount of phase delay, you're getting at 50% throttle, about 0.6 milliseconds. That's quite a bit. I would rather take that off and use that some other way. I'm not really getting a lot of bang for my buck there, is my opinion. Now this is the black box log from the flight you just saw. I don't have the raw noise recorded here because I was looking at the debug traces, but you can see my gyro filtered. This is fully filtered on the gyro. So basically this is just the dynamic notch. So if I look at the roll, pitch, and yaw, I really don't see any peaks. And the other fact is that the P term, so this is directly then fed into the P term, the I term, and the D term. I term, you don't have to worry about vibration at all. And P term, you really don't need to either. It's all really the D term is the problem. So why don't we just put our filtering where the problem lies on the D term. We made up that 0.6 milliseconds, and it ranges, right? It's probably 0.8 to 0.4 milliseconds of phase delay there. So we can use that and maybe filter out the D term a little bit more heavily. Now this is the spectrograph for the D term for that flight. And you can see it, you know, it amplifies any of that. This is on the roll axis, so it's, you know, like they talk, like we talk about, the D term amplifies any noise coming into it. So this is the this is the gyro signal from the roll axis, and then as soon as the D it hits the D term for it to do its thing, you can see that amplifies up. But right here, if you notice, this is 100 hertz, 106 hertz. So all these big spikes, this is prop wash. So on that flight, that prop wash was getting up to around 90 hertz. So as you get your, your quad into a more high performance tune, you're going to see that prop wash uh, frequency of the prop wash going up to probably around 100 hertz. Uh, I got it up to around like 90. I'd still like to keep progressing. I'm never satisfied until there's like absolutely no prop wash, which I've, I've never actually seen. So in comparing the two approaches, this is the, the flight log that had the gyro filtering, a low pass one, which was dynamic and everything we saw there. And this is the D term on the roll. And this is the same thing. Uh, now we didn't put that, we turned off the gyro low pass one filter and we put, we basically brought the values down on the D term dynamic low pass filter. And you can see here, although, you know, and, and you can see the spikes are higher because we were able to move this prop wash up in frequency up to 100 hertz, which is a good thing. But all the noise suppression on the D term above 100 hertz is actually, of course, better on this approach because you're putting more of your filtering there, you're getting that D term uh, cutoffs lower because you freed up that phase delay from taking that gyro low pass filter and turning it off. And then when you compare apples to apples in the filter calc here to see which actually is producing the lowest amount of latency, it is the new approach. You can see here we have the gyro on, dynamic at its defaults, and then our low pass one at its defaults there. You get about 4.1 milliseconds at 50% throttle. And then switching that up, so we turned off gyro low pass one, changed the dynamic notch settings here, the 250, and the 6%, and then change this low pass filter one to the new settings here. Now you can see we're getting about 3.5 milliseconds. So we made up about 0.6 milliseconds at 50% throttle, and that gets even better as you're at higher throttle values. So it's these incremental adjustments. It was more attenuation, better filtering for six milliseconds less of phase delay. So we're going in the right direction. For this quad, I could probably chase it a little bit more, move this up to 200 and uh, get that down even lower, 
but it, you do start to hit a spot where it's just kind of is what it is uh, and you can't get any better than that at least without implementing on this end the rpm filter possibly but that adds uh, phase delay as well so i'm not I, I haven't done that yet this is just without rpm since that's bl heli software is beta at this point okay well that is it so you can see the approach is to use your notch filters either dynamic notch or rpm uh, or and i think in rpm there's still guys are running with the rpm notches and the dynamic at the same time I don't know that the RPM was en as enough to hit it all, at least in the in 4.0 stable release. I know there's continuing work on that. And then put your low pass filters a little bit lower on your D term since that's really the problem child and that's where you get the broad based noise. So you just notch filters on the gyro, either in some way, shape, or form that are dynamic, and then your dynamic low pass filters on the D term and obviously if you need more if your quads more noisy than what I've shown here then you would need some more filtering so that's that's the hard part like I, all these machines you know different um, different equipment different build qualities things like that nature um, so you gotta kinda either do some trial and error or pull up some logs and kinda get into it or just just fly the presets and fly the defaults but the presets and the defaults are trying to cover a broad base of users, like I talked about before, up to maybe 200,000 users. And um, you, know, you might be able to tweak out some more performance if you spend a little time. It's really just the fact, do you, do you want to spend that time or not? And uh, not, not everybody does, some people do. And if you do, these are some things to think about. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.